Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the private property whip, word, whip words episode on how understanding how a property investor thinks. I'm really looking forward today to sharing with you just a few thoughts on how a property investor thinks and how they look at property investment. Now, the first thing that I would like to share with you is understanding why properties invest in, in, in property. And that's a very, very important question to ask and to understand. So from a property investor's perspective, for me, there are four main reasons why they invest in property. And the first one is consistent growth. If you look at property as an asset class, one would see that there has been consistent growth in property over the last 50 years. The second one is economic, great economic fundamentals. And the important thing to understand here is that property is a basic need, ladies and gents, and that property, that there will always be a need for, um, for, for, for housing and for, for shelter and for people to have a place to stay. So because property is a basic need, it's very, very, um, it, 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 it's very beneficial to invest in such an asset class. Also from a supply perspective, there's of course limited supply and there's limited space in the country, which is also a great benefit. And then you of course have the opportunity and the benefit to buy property at a discount. When property investors buy property, they want to buy that property at a good price because they know if they can buy that property below market value, it gives great returns for them. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the most important reason why many property investors are so fond of property as an investment class. And that is the fact that property investors can use the bank's money. They can use leverage, ladies and gentlemen. So they, can, they don't have to put all of the money down that they want to invest. They can actually get the greatest portion of it from someone else, such as the bank. Now, one thing very, very important, ladies and gents, to remember when it comes to property investors is that a good property investor will bolt their property portfolio like one would bolt a business. That means they would run this business or this property portfolio in an entity of its own, with its own bank account and with its own financial statements. So very, very important to remember is that when you work with a um, property investor as a real estate agent, that you understand their need for structures and why they wouldn't necessarily want to put the property in their own name. So usually property investors would invest in one of two ways. They would either buy their properties directly in a property trust or alternatively they would buy their property in a company but the company's shares will be held in a trust. Now you will see in both of these examples that there's actually a trust, that there's actually a trust um, on top of the structure. Now the reason for that is very, very important. And I just quickly want to share with you why trusts in a in property investor structure is so important. And there's four reasons that I would like to discuss with you. The first one is asset protection. Property investors use trust so that they can protect their assets better. Ideally, as a property investor, you don't want to have any assets in your name. So you'd rather have all of your asset, assets structured within the trust. The second reason is for legacy or continuity or estate planning. When you pass away, if you have a lot of assets on your name, there's a lot of costs being paid. Estate duties, executive fees, capital gains tax, uh, transfer fees. So investors would structure their property portfolios within structures to avoid all of those costs on debt. And then two reasons why it is so important not to buy property in your own name, but to buy it in a structure as explained, a, a property company with a holding trust or a property trust is because of financing capability. When you run your property portfolio like a business, in its own entity, with its own bank account and its own financials. Your financing capability, the, the ability for you to get financing on multiple properties becomes more possible. And that is a very, very big reason why property investors don't like to buy property in their own name and why they shouldn't buy property in their own name. And then lastly, with the right structure, there are great tax benefits, whether it is in a property trust, by using the conduit principle, meaning that capital gains and profits can be distributed to beneficiaries, 
or whether it is in a, in a company utilizing the lower um, tax rate charge, both of those structures are very good structures when it comes to um, investing in property. Now, there are two reasons why property investors invest in, um, in, in, in property. There, there are two returns that you have as a property investor. And the one is your capital appreciation and the other one is your cash flow. And usually, a property investor would follow one of these two strategies or focus primarily, let me rather say, on one of these strategies. They would either look at capital appreciation or capital growth on the investment, or they would look at the cash flow that this property can generate. So as, as somebody in the real estate industry or as a real estate agent, you need to understand your property investor and why they are investing in property. Because if you know that, you would know how to sell a property to an investor. So a property investor that focuses primarily on cash flow, wants to see good positive cash flow. So they want to see good rental income and a positive, um, a positive cash flow out of that property from a monthly perspective after the bond payment and the levies and the rates. A, a, a property investor that focuses on capital growth are not necessarily so concerned about the positive cash flow on a monthly basis, but they want properties that show good prospects for capital appreciation. And when you as a a real estate agent or somebody in the property industry understand this and understand how a property investor looks at an investment, you can also sell, um, sell a property better and give a um, property investor better information. Now, it is so important to remember, ladies and gents, that when you invest in property, as a property investor, it is about the numbers. It is not about how beautiful the property looks or how the property makes you feel when you walk in it, it is all about the numbers. And as somebody that is in the real estate industry, it's critically important for you to understand these numbers and to understand how you, uh, to understand how you as a property investor, um, how, how a property investor would look at the numbers when it comes to making a decision. So, We've discussed the two returns that a property portfolio have. Um, on the one side, you've got the capital growth. On the other side, you have, a, have the net rental yield. Now, this is very, very important for you to understand. You need to know why, as we said, a property investor is investing in property. Now, we said there's cash flow and there's um, capital growth, right? But an investor's return would be made up out of both of these. So when you are selling a property or when you are making a proposal to a property investor on a specific property, it's critically important that you can point out to that property um, investor, what does the capital appreciation or the capital growth look like? Also, what does the net rental yield look like? And we're going to discuss those formulas a bit further. But have a look at property price growth in South Africa over the last 50 plus years. In um, 1994, the average size property would have costed you 175,000 rand. That same property today would cost you almost 1.7 million rand. Now, ladies and gents, that's a great selling point when you are telling somebody why they should invest in property. If, if you look at this graph, you will see how consistently property has appreciated over many decades. You will also see that property price growth has been very consistent. It hasn't been... Um, up one year and then down the next year and then up again two years and then down a year after that again, property prices have actually consistently increased over time. And that's a very good selling point when it comes to speaking to property investors. Then if we look at this graph from a different direction, it would look as follows. And you would have um, year, 50 years of data on the year-on-year -year growth on property prices. So you would see here that in, for example, 1981 and also then 2004, that property prices in one year grew with between 30 and 40 percent. And then you would also see in the last 50 years, there's only three years where property price actually depreciated or decreased. And that is in 1985, 1986, and then also in 2009. So understanding these figures um, as somebody uh, selling property or somebody that's in the real estate industry, is critically important and also when you can understand these numbers and communicate these numbers to property investors it will also increase your efficiency 
and, and effectiveness actually as a real estate agent. So the very interesting thing about this graph for me is if you take an average year on year growth over the last 50 plus years, you are looking at about 10% year on year that property has grown. Now, we know that we haven't seen that lately, but it does show you what is possible over a longer period or a longer term in property investors, uh, in property investment. So then, ladies and gents, it's very, very important to understand the formulas that investors use to look at whether a property is a good investment or not. And also to know how to communicate this to property investors. Remember that we said that um, properties is a numbers game for a property investor. And you need to understand the jargon, the language that property investors speak when it comes to um, when, when it comes to looking at the numbers. And the first formula that I want to speak about today, and the formula that you should know off by heart, is gross rental yield. This is one of the first things that a property investor looks at when they are looking at whether an investment um, makes sense for them or not. And what gross rental yield says is gross rental yields determines, a gross rental yield determines what the annual rental is as a percentage of the purchase price when an investor is planning to purchase that property at a specific price. So you would take the monthly rent, multiply it by 12, divide it by the purchase price, and then times it by 100 to get the uh, percentage. Now, this is very, very important to understand when you speak to a property investor that you can tell the property investor the average gross rental yield in this area is 10.5%. But on this specific property that you are looking at, we have a gross rental yield of 12%, which means that the um, annual rental income is 12% of the purchase price. And that's a number that is very important for a property investor. One can then take it a step further. And this formula is significantly more important than gross rental yield, and that's net rental yield. Now, what rent, net rental yield says is what is the property's um, returns from a net perspective after you have deducted the monthly cost. Now, we are talking about costs like agents' commissions, levies, rates and taxes, and in some instances, people would even uh, look at maintenance and, and vacancy as well. So the net rental yield would be your rental income, less your agent's commission, less your levies, less your rates and taxes, less your insurance. And like I say, some people even include uh, maintenance or less maintenance there. And that gives you then the average monthly rental after costs. Multiply that by 12 to get an annual amount and divide that by the purchase price. What a lot of people do is um, when they want to include vacancies and maintenance into the formula, they multiply by 10, by 10 months instead of 12 months. And they allocate one month's rental to vacancy and they allocate one month's rental to maintenance. And that's also a very good uh, formula that you can use to explain to a property investor what their return is going to be from a rental perspective. Remember we said that there are two returns, there's the capital appreciation and there's the net rental yield, which is the rental income less expenses on an annual basis. And that is a percentage of the purchase price. So when you want to speak the jargon um, that a property investor, um, uh, if, if you want to um, speak the language of property investors and use the jargon that property investors use, you would go to an, um, in a property investor. If you are uh, marketing a property, and you want to sell it, and you know it's a property investor that wants to buy this property. You can tell, um, you can tell um, the the person, sir, madam, this particular property over the last five or ten years has had a five percent year-on-year capital appreciation. Over and above that, if you look at the net rental yield of this particular property, you are looking at a seven percent net rental yield. Here are the numbers. That means your total ungeared return is 12%. So that is the kind of language that you want to speak when you work with property investors. Then, ladies and gents, a very, very important formula for a property investor when they want to buy a property is, is this property going to put money in my pocket or is it going to take money out of my pocket? And if it takes money out of my pocket, how much money is it going to take out of my pocket and by when will I break even? Now, all of that uh, we discuss under the shortfall formulas. And the most important formula here that I want to discuss is 
understanding shortfall. So shortfall would be your rental income, monthly rental income, less your monthly mortgage payment, less your levies, less your rates and taxes, less your rental commission. And that will give you the number that you need to either put in um, every month or that you get out after, after all of those costs. Now, that's very, very important because remember, the one thing that is finite is capital, right? Or available um, funds on a monthly basis. So the smaller that shortfall is for a property investor, or the bigger uh, that surplus is for a property investor, the better the investor is. So when you um, present a property to a property investor, you want to be able to tell the person, this property has a shortfall of 1,500 Rand a month, and um, here are the numbers, and you would probably break even after four years or five years of investing on, in this property. Or if it's a cash flow property, you would say, this property from um, year one already has positive cash flow. You start with a positive 500 Rand cash flow, and it will be so much after so many years on a monthly basis. When you can uh, present these numbers to a property investor, immediately you become more effective as a property investor. So these are the formulas that we've discussed then. We've spoken about gross rental yield, net rental yield, shortfall, shortfall cover percentage. And then a more sophisticated uh, formula that investors use is internal rate of return or geared internal rate of return, which we are not going to discuss in detail today, but that is also something that you can understand, um, that, that you can learn more about. Then it's very important uh, to understand how property investors look at interest rate, interest rates. Um, and to keep in mind, as a property investor, your biggest risk is probably interest rates. Think about it. If you have multiple properties and interest rates go, uh, go up with 1% over a couple of months, think of the effect that that has on that property investor's cash flow and on their shortfall, the formula that we just discussed. And when you can understand interest rates and the trends that we are in, and you can, um, you can present that to a property investor and explain to them where we are at, what interest rates are looking like, that also makes you more effective as a real estate agent. So that is something that's very, very important to keep in mind. Just for interest sake, these, uh, this is the interest rates over the last 50 years in South Africa. And you can see that there were times where interest rates um, were low 5, 6, 7% or just over 5%. But then there were times where interest rates twice in the last 50 years where we've seen interest rates go up to almost 25%. So it's, under, it's important to understand these trends and to understand how that affects a property investor. I hope that that has been helpful, ladies and gents, and uh, that you have enjoyed this webinar. There's a couple of frequently asked questions that I want to uh, go through with you that you can also keep in mind when you work with property investors. The first question that I want to go through is, why is a 30-year bond, uh, bond better than a 20-year bond? You would often see that property investors would prefer a 30-year bond over a 20-year bond. And the reason for that, ladies and gents, is it's all about cash flow. The better the um, monthly cash flow can be on a property, the more properties a property investor can own. The question I get so often when I present this is, but do you know how much interest you are paying? And I always joke and I say, no, I'm not paying the interest as a property investor. My tenant is paying the interest. So when it comes to property investment and when you use the bank's money, you want to get to break even or positive cash flow as quickly as possible because when you are in such a position, the number of properties that you can own in your property portfolio is significantly bigger. So, that being kept in mind, a property investor should always go for a 30-year bond rather than a 20-year bond. Then, um, another question that I have here is, should a property investor buy property in their own name or should they own it in a structure such as a trust or a company? And as I explained in this webinar, it's critically important as a property investor to run your property portfolio like a business. This will enable you to get more financing over the long run. In other words, building a bigger property portfolio, having your assets protected better, having um, less costs on death one day when you pass away, 
and also having um, less taxes that you pay um, when this is structured correctly. So you want to own your properties as a property investor, either in a property trust or in a property company with a holding trust, uh, a holding trust holding the shares in that portfolio. Then um, something we spoke about interest rates. How do how does an investor hedge themselves against an increase in interest rates? And there are two ways that you can do that. One is to have a reserve fund, a healthy reserve fund. So when you speak to property investors, to remind them that they put some money away in the access bond if they want to, that they can use in the case of interest rates increasing. The other alternative is, of course, to fix your interest rates. And that may be a question that you get very often. And although fixing interest rates can give you peace of mind, it usually comes at quite a premium. And that cost obviously needs to be considered. Then um, so we, uh, a question that I very often get is where do property investors find properties at a discount? And um, this is where it's very important as a real estate agent when you know that a seller is distressed and, um, that, or that a seller needs to sell quickly, that you know how to sell that to a property investor as well um, by saying, listen, this is a property that needs to sell quickly. Uh, it usually would sell for 900,000 Rand, but the sellers indicated that they would be happy to buy this property at 800,000 Rand. So you are going to buy this property below market value and um, use that as a technique to uh, make a property investor or to inform a property investor that this property is actually being sold at a discount. And then... Um, a question that I very, very often get is when it comes to um, renovations after you've bought a property, how much or how little should you renovate? And the thing that I always advise property investors is make sure that you look at what other properties in that area are selling for, that you don't overcapitalize on the property. When you've bought a property for significantly less than other properties in the areas, you've got capacity to uh, renovate and, and improve that property. And um, that can, of course, add value to your investment and increase your returns as well. And then last question that I want to uh, discuss with you, and this is something that when you can guide a property investor with, um, where you can build up a lot of trust, and the, the, that is where do I start to build up my property investment team? And who should be in that team? Now, obviously, we know in that team should be a real estate agent, somebody like yourself that can bring great investment properties to the property investor. But then that person also need a structuring specialist that can help with the structuring, an accountant that can help with the accounting of those entities, a bond originator or a banker that can help with the financing, a conveyancing attorney that can help with the transfers, and also maybe a commercial attorney with more sophisticated um, property transactions. You, of course, need um, maintenance people in your team that can help with maintenance and repairs on this particular property. And all of those are, are property investment team members that you can suggest um, for a property investor. Um, as um, to, uh, as a, uh, All of these are, are um, team members that you can recommend to a property investor that can help them build their property portfolio. Ladies and gents, it's been lovely being by you and I hope that you enjoyed this private property um, web words episode and um, I wish you a very, very good day and thank you very much for joining.